I could have your attention here in the media center. We are now joined by Kyle Bush, driver of the number 18 Interstate Batteries Toyota for Joe Gibbs Racing. Kyle, the defending winner of this race. What is it about this racetrack, Kyle, that really gets uh, gets the excitement going and you, you know and you know how to bring it home as far as exciting finishes here? Yeah, this racetrack for us has been pretty good over the years, uh, especially the last few years of finally figuring out our short track program and getting that going at Joe Gibbs Racing. But uh, Denny's always been good here. Certainly I've used a lot of his notes and talked to him a lot about how to help myself here. And it's worked. And, uh, you know, we've qualified up front. We've, we've led some laps. We just have have yet to found the speed on the long runs. That seems to be where we lack a little bit still to today. So, um, you know, we certainly look to come out here this weekend and uh, and have a good strong run see if we can't get ourselves in victory lane uh wins are what matters most um you know we were able to do that here in this race as you mentioned last year and uh we'd like to be able to do it again deal open the floor to questions we will start with claire and work our way around to bob claire b lang sirius xm nascar radio Kyle, your thoughts about hearing that Dale Earnhardt Jr. will not be in the car. Your thoughts, you know, you've been through injuries uh, on the concussion side of things. How does it strike you and you know, do you take precautions? Have you had any close encounters in any of your accidents, concussions in your career? Um, you know, it is certainly, um, you know, not a good thing that uh, that Dale's not able to race. And certainly uh, I've sent my, my regards, but, um, you know, it's... It's a, a tough subject, you know, it, it's it's all about how you're feeling and you can you're the only one that knows how you're feeling. You can't show, um, you know, these types of injuries as well as you can a, a broken bone or something to that respect. So, um, you know, it's all about Dale and I, I commend him for for taking action and feeling what he was feeling and being able to go to the doctors and uh, and explaining that and, and for for them to say that he needed to sit out a week or two or however many it may be. Uh, was best for him and, and obviously that is what's best for him is his health so um, you know it's a tough situation to be in as a race car driver I've never been uh, in that situation where I have felt something um, you know in within my head I've, I've got a lot of screws loose but um, none that uh, none that were that bad that I felt like I needed to go get looked at so uh, thankfully I haven't had that and hopefully I don't I don't have to deal with that we'll go to Bob then to Fluto and then to Mark uh, Bob Hawker CSPN is are concussions and concussion protocol discussed at all at the, the driver council meetings? And are you comfortable with the way NASCAR kind of goes about um, trying to figure out, A, if you've had a, any sort of concussion after an accident, and then what kind of policies they have to get back into the car? Yeah, we haven't, that hasn't necessarily been a hot topic of conversation in any of our meetings. So um, for us to, look at what NASCAR has in place for us. You know, we go through the impact testing. Uh, we do that as a baseline. And then if we do have any injuries in which they suspect or they think we need to go back through the baseline test again uh, for, a, for a, a second test in order to make sure that we kind of match up, um, they'll ask us to do that. Now, I've never had to go through any of that, so I can't speak to what exactly the threshold is. Like, you know, if you get an A plus on your baseline and you get a D on your on your next one, you know, does that mean that you're out of the car? There, there, there's never been that sort of stance that or that clarity uh, from NASCAR or from the doctors on on what they think um, is allowed to get back in the race car and what isn't. So that's something that I'm still unknown of uh, for today. So um, I guess I can't speak much further to any of that. Hi, Kyle. Fluto Shinzawa, Boston Globe. You look at the results that you guys have had this year. Uh, I know you have to make adjustments based on your car and track, um, but overall, just generally, how would you describe the feeling of what it's been like in the car when you show up at a track? What can you consistently kind of depend on, and what do you like about the way the car's been running? Yeah, we've had some really good speed this year. You know, that's been certainly a good thing to have. You know, you sometimes you go to these racetracks and you're confused as to why you're not very fast and you struggle along and you don't really fare very well in practice or the race. But uh, for us on the JGR side, especially speaking on the 18 car, um, we have had decent speed in practices, maybe sometimes not, you know, at the top of the sheet, but we're the top half of the sheet. And then we get to the race and we can always count on the race of being able to race our way up towards the front. So um, that's that's been um, a huge confidence booster for us as a team for me as a driver adam as a crew chief that uh we know when we get to the race that we'll have the opportunity to make ourselves better and and have good races um you know i think our worst finish this year 
um, is, you know, 12th, I guess, a couple weeks ago. We had a fuel mileage race at, at Kentucky that uh, limited our progress. We were running in the top five, probably should have finished fourth or fifth, um, you know, and, and that would have probably been our about our worst finish uh, without something happening during the race, you know, a flat tire or, as I mentioned, a fuel mileage um, coming into play towards the end of the race. So, you know, we've, we've had good speed, so that's been a, a positive for us. We'll go to Mark, then to Rich, then to Nate, and then to Rob. Um, i got a two-part question. Number one, you talked about only a driver would know whether he's feeling right and, and, and needs to question that. Do fans and do the rest of us really understand the physical beating that you guys take in a car in a given race or a given race weekend? And, and just can you, can, talk, can you talk to that? Yeah, I don't think, um, I, I think it's hard for people to understand or to feel exactly what we feel throughout an event. I mean, I've heard a lot of people over the years that have gone on and done the Richard Petty driving experience or the riding experience, and they've certainly gotten a taste of what, what we do on a weekly basis. And, and their quotes to me is, man, we've got a heck of a lot more respect for you. That was a lot more than we anticipated or expected that, uh, that we'd feel. So um, you always get that, and I always encourage people to go get a chance to get in a race car and kind of feel it out and see what we do. But um, to do it for four, four and a half hours on on every single weekend, you know, you you do take a it does take a toll on your body. And I I can say that now because when I was 18, 19, 20 years old, younger, uh, I really didn't feel it. I could go through a whole season, I really didn't feel it a whole lot. Well, now I'm 31, and I feel it a heck of a lot more. You know, certainly I remember it. Um, you know. Um, Late last year, um, getting towards the end of the year, I actually still felt pretty good. I only ran half the year. You know, this year now I've run from the beginning of the year. I'm getting to about the halfway point. I'm feeling the same way I did at Homestead, and we still have another half of the year to go. So, you know, certainly you've got to kind of, um, you know, modulate your body and take care of your body the best you can. Um, I feel like there's a lot of things that you can do off the track that can help that, and um, I try to do all that stuff as, as much as I can. My other question is just looking ahead to Indy. Is it still... You know, you, before you want to quit this thing, you got to have the Daytona 500, Southern 500. You know, is it still, you know, although the attendance has been off a little bit here in recent years, it, is it still really important to you guys to win? Uh, it is. You know, it certainly was for us last year. I think that um, for myself and the 18 team, being able to win with Skittles there last year was pretty awesome because it was our first Brickyard 400 win for me, for Adam, uh, being a crew chief, uh, although he's won there as an engineer a couple times. But, uh, you know, it's really special as a whole team, and, and they treat it very special there as well, too, with uh, the whole ceremony post-race and everything that's go that goes on there with taking the ride around the track and the owner being with you, and J.D. was with us last year. That, that was pretty cool. So, um, you know, it is a big deal. I, I feel like it is for us, for our team. We circle it on the calendar every year. That's one we want to win. You know, we, we always circle the, the Daytona 500, the Coke 600, the All-Star Race, and um, and the Brickyard 400 and the Southern 500 and Homestead. And, uh, you know, there's probably a couple more in there that you want to win, such as, you know, any one race within each round of the chase. You know, you, you want to win any of those to get yourself locked in and moving, moving on to the next round um, just to solidify your chances for being able to win a championship. But um, it's obviously uh, a big race, and um, I guess it still pays pretty decent, so you might as well win it. Get rich than the name. Hi, Kyle. Rich Thompson, Boston Herald. Being the reigning champion in the way you did it last year, has that kind of changed your perspective, maybe give you a greater appreciation of what you do for work? Yeah, no doubt. You know, so certainly uh, there was a lot of questions in my head throughout the beginning part of the season as to whether or not this is something that I need to continue doing or want to continue doing. And there was no doubt in my mind that all the answers were always yes. You know, you get back in that race car. So uh, worked hard to do all that to get back in and went through the, the, the finish of the season, won the championship. And and um, you know it was just such a, a great accomplishment for myself as well as my, my family and my team that um, you know it, it definitely meant so much more probably going through the things that I did last year than if it were just a continuation of the years that have gone by to, to be able to win the championship. So we took a greater appreciation from all that and um, certainly used that as fuel going forward. Go to Nate, then to Rob, and then we'll finish with Reed. Uh, Nate Ryan, NBC Sports. Kyle, the 78 penalty at Kentucky, have you had a chance to, to look at that and analyze and understand why NASCAR made that penalty? And there's some that feel like there's selective enforcement of that situation. Would you agree? Um, I have not really seen the video of it, but I watched it live. And, and while I watched it, I was like, ooh, all right, if you don't get busted for that, then that's interesting. You know, I have certainly have seen those moves be made before on pit road with um, – 
other cars. Uh, I specifically remember, I think it was Jimmy Johnson at Atlanta, maybe it was earlier this year or last year, that he made a couple passes to the left side before getting into his box and slowing down, and, and nothing was ever called. So that's why I think more and more guys have kind of gone into that and have been trying to do that. We play the timing lines way too much. And, um, you know, so that was just something that was out there for him to, to play with and try, and, and he did, and, and they busted him for it. So um, I do agree with you a little bit on how they're sometimes, you know, selective a little bit on, on who they punish. But um, I do feel like when we have asked NASCAR to be more forceful and to be more, um, to make more calls, especially like the restart things that have kind of gone on the last little bit, you know, I do feel as though that they've they've gone on to make more restart calls on people. They do review the restarts, it seems, a heck of a lot more than they used to and making sure that everybody was clean and, and that uh, things were done properly. So and it, it has seemed to have cleaned up restarts. So uh, hopefully with them making some calls on pit road, it'll clean up pit road a little bit. So should they call it every time they see that? The rule states no passing to the left. So when your front bumper proceeds to the front bumper of the car that you're next to, then that's called passing. So. Um, even though you're you're passing them for a split second before you slow back down to get into your box, you know to me that's passing. Uh, go back to Michigan, maybe it was 2011 or 2012 or something like that. I was actually on the flip side of that. I was to the right side of Tony Stewart, and Tony Stewart was not running at pit road speed. I, I could actually run a faster pit road speed because I felt like my threshold was higher than what Tony's was, and I passed him on the right side before he pulled off to turn into his pit box, and they posted me for passing to the right. Which is which is legal, so you know what what exactly the pit road rules are. I guess is is we may need to have a little bit of a clarification exactly on on what all is going down. So uh, I've just you know not been that aggressive on pit road ever since I got called for the Tony call about left or right, and um, you know and and have not been busted on any of those since. Rob and Reed. Rob T. Oxen to the podium finish. Kyle, this was the racetrack last year where I kind of felt like things besides Sonoma and Kentucky, where you really started to make your championship charge. Talk about how a win at this trade track can really catalyze your season and make it like a, a strong effort towards the championship. And kind of following up with what Mark said about the physicality of NASCAR, it's not undoubtedly going to be a very hot weekend at Loudoun. What are some things you do to prepare for that? Yeah, um, you know, this was a good race for us last year. Winning here was certainly a, a bit of momentum that we had on our side. We were running third, and we had the caution kind of go our way. It got us the track position we needed, and we were able to win from there. So, um, you know, there are things that have to work out and go in your favor in order to win some of these races sometimes, and we had some of that here. So this is a tough track to pass, and, uh, you know, when you can have a good car here and you can pass your competition and you can beat them, then it gives you a bit of confidence in, uh, in your cars and in, your, and in yourself that you're able to go out there and beat those guys each and every week. So it does give you that extra, you know, boost to go on to the next week. Like we had uh, last year, we went to Indy, and we won Indy as well, too. It was our three in a row from Kentucky, Loudoun, and Indy that we won, and, and that was that was awesome. I mean, that was just um, something really, really special. It actually gave me some confidence going to Indy. I was like, man, you know how cool it's going to be to win three in a row, but you know how cool it's going to be to win the Brickyard 400, you know? So that was certainly some thoughts that we had going into that week, and, and we just set our mind to it, and we were able to capitalize. So that was good. And uh, for it being as hot as it is here this weekend, I, I don't know if I remember, remember it being this hot here. So uh, it's going to be a warm one, and, and good thing I decided I wanted to run two here this weekend. So we'll be in the Xfinity race and the Sprint Cup race, but um, do the best we can with what we've got and uh, drink plenty of fluids and make sure that uh, we're ready to go and well-rested for the for the whole day. Yeah, good reading in the Bob. A Reed Spencer with NASCAR Wire Service. Having been both a teammate and a car owner to Eric Jones, do you see any similarities between Eric and yourself at his age? Um, I, I do. I think Eric is, um, he's really good. He's really focused. He tries very hard and, uh, you know, he's easy to disappoint, you know? So, um, you know, there are times when he gives everything that he's got and he tries and, uh, and he's disappointed in, in the results of that effort. You know, I feel like last week, probably at Kentucky, he was pretty disappointed in, in what happened there, but, um, you know, he's, People said it about me, and I'll say it about him. He's got plenty of opportunities. He's got a bright future that uh, he's going to score plenty of wins. But, you know, you always hate it when you give those easy ones away. You know, that's probably the worst trait that, uh, that he and I both have. But, um, you know, we're, we're fast, we're competitive, and we want to win each and every week. So that's, that's good things about us. Bob, and then we'll finish here with Terrell. Uh, Bob Hawker, ESPN. Hendrick announced today that if Dale Jr. can't race next week, that Jeff Gordon will be in the car at Indianapolis. Um, is there, what are your thoughts on 
Jeff possibly returning and I mean is it is there any reason not to think he couldn't just step right back in and be competitive yeah I think that's pretty cool um you know that's uh certainly you know Jeff always said when when he was stepping to the side that he was not retiring you know so um I think that's pretty neat that uh there's an opportunity there for him to be able to come back and race probably in one of his favorite races and given that he's sort of a hometown boy when he goes to Indiana that he wants to uh run the Brickyard 400 again so if that all comes to fruition, then uh, I do feel as though Jeff would be able to jump right back in. I don't think that he would have to go through any sort of protocol to, um, you know, to, to be back behind the wheel. I think that he would be able to handle it just fine. Um, you know, he's been around the sport all this year in the beginning part of the season and has seen the races and has commentated on the races, and he hasn't missed much. So I'm sure he'll be ready to go right out of the box. Terrell. Hi, Kyle. Terrell Covey. I'm with Seacoast Media Group and Portsmouth Herald here in New Hampshire. Um, I'm just wondering where you guys are pretty well locked into the chase, um, as are a couple of your teammates, and this is an important track in the first round of the chase. Is there anything you can take out of this weekend, especially knowing there's probably going to be some big weather changes between now and then, um, but is there anything you can take out of this weekend to sort of plan ahead for that first round of the chase here? Yeah, definitely. Uh, your, your base setup, you know, as you run here will be pretty similar to what you will run here in the fall. Uh, there's definitely some things that you'll change. You know, this weekend you may run softer rear springs because it's hotter outside and the rear tires have a tendency to burn off easier when it's hot out versus when we come back here in the fall it may be cooler and we may just put spring rate to the back of the car and, and um, make the car turn a little bit better so um, those sorts of things that uh, that you look at but definitely this is a race that um, that you will focus a little bit more effort on and making sure that you're um, a little cleaner in your changes during practice and um, you know you focus on what you feel like you need to focus on this time around that you learned from last year and Adam and I having that experience from last year will help us uh, this year to making sure that uh, we can com we can really prepare ourselves well for the next race here. Kyle, really appreciate you coming in today. Okay, thanks. Good luck this weekend.